we will talk about neurotropic supplements and let's first define what means neurotropic. It means that the agent can support, nourish or protect neurons. That's the idea. If they protect neurons or nourish them or help them to grow, they are neurotropic. It means neuro means neurons and tropic means nourishment from Greek. And they also improve neuroplasticity. And what means neuroplasticity? It means restructurization or reorganization of brain, brain cells, and they can change and create new connections. And it is associated with learning and memory. So neuroplasticity means new connections between neurons and neurotropic supplements help neuroplasticity also. First and most popular neurotropic supplement is omega-3. Many people know it as a uh, fish oil, but other, uh, for example, nuts also contains omega-3, but many people say that it's fish oil. Omega-3 is very important for our brain and we can we have recent studies, according to them, it directly increased level of brain derived neurotropic factor. It's protein and this protein uh, have several important role, including uh, creating memories and protect neurons from stress. And uh, it stimulates also ne uh, neuron growth. So it, uh, this uh, brain-derived neurotropic factor has many important functions. Second most important characteristic of omega-3 is uh, it improves neuron development and growth and survival. That's why omega-3 is especially important among young kids. It helps development of brain and it's important in older adults because it decreases of decline and degeneration of brain which is associated with age. We have several meta-analyses and omega-3 improves memory, it improves cognition, especially in people who have mild cognitive deficit it reduces depression also and reduces anxiety because it is thought that omega-3 plays a role in synthesis of neurotransmitters such as dopamine and serotonin. And we should know that we have two main types of omega-3. It is DHA and EPA. What is the difference between them? DHA is part of neurons um, cell membrane so it's structural component it part of structure of neurons it's dha so if we say which 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 one of them is associated with brain dha or epa definitely dha because it's part of neurons structural part of neurons that's why dha is very important component of brain and epa is more anti-inflammatory epa is not only anti-inflammatory for brain but also for cardiovascular health so epa has much more widespread action it's anti-inflammatory and here is also important question that what will be optimal dosage of omega-3 it's around 500 milligrams for each one 500 milligrams for dha and 500 milligrams for epa and what is optimal duration it's around six months it's considered safe and if we if we want to know that uh, which which fish oil contains more dha or epa salmon contains more dha uh, uh, opposite salmon contains more EPA and tuna contains more DHA so tuna contains more DHA DHA is 
uh, component of uh, omega-3 which is uh, important for brain and salmon has more anti-inflammatory action what is important risk factor for uh, omega-3 it's bleeding but it's very rare it can increase the risk of bleeding but it can increase the risk in people who has already risk of bleeding who intake medications blood thinners in such people so that people who already intaking such medications blood thinners or antiplatelets they should be careful to intake omega-3 especially with high doses uh, another important supplement for brain is vitamin b12 it's considered one of the most important neurotropic uh, agent why it is so important because vitamin b12 is important to create myelin shed for neurons it's protective cover for neurons so it's very important part uh, and it takes place of uh, electrical stimul conduction in the, between neurons that's why it's important also and it covers and it protects neurons so b12 is very important vitamin also uh, vitamin b12 is important of metabolism of homocysteine why is important homocysteine because high levels of homocysteine causes neurodegeneration it destroys neurons that's why we need metabolize it to neutralize homocysteine and for this neutralization we need vitamin b12 and what happens if we have vitamin b12 deficiency uh, we have cognitive decline dementia and neuropathy so serious we have serious symptoms when we have vitamin b12 deficiency and if when person intakes vitamin b12 it improves memory attention and balance and what is the optimal uh, dosage it's around 6 to 10 micrograms and second important uh, vitamin b is vitamin b6 vitamin b6 also important for our uh, nervous system and vitamin b6 deficiency causes depression anxiety neuropathy and if person intakes vitamin b6 it improves cognitive function and in some people it redu reduces pain that's why some medication are promoted as uh, it reduces nerve pain and if person has neural like pain uh, sometimes doctors prescribe vitamin b6 to relieve this pain optimal dosage is 100 to 200 milligrams uh, uh, but we should know that if person intake excessive amount of vitamin b6 it can destroy nerves over time so be careful with vitamin b6 it can be uh, neurodegenerative in high doses when we need it and we, when we have deficient uh, we need to intake and uh, uh, and we, we need we need to intake a sufficient amount of vitamin b6 but high doses of vitamin b6 can cause neurodegeneration and what food contains is vitamin b12 and vitamin b6 most meat products contain both of them for example chicken meat beef liver eggs milk uh, almost any meat contains vitamin b12 and b6 especially b12 is important because meat contains b12 and vegetables and fruit does not contain b12 maybe some vegetables and plants contain very minimal amount of b12 but it's not sufficient for people so we need meat products uh, to get vitamin b12 it's very important 
and liver contains high amount of vitamin b12 it's very important also because liver is excellent source of vitamin b12 it considers 100 times more vitamin b12 than other most of foods another supplement is ginkgo biloba ginkgo biloba is well-known supplement for its health benefits and it's also promoted as a um, neurotropic agent because it improves brain circulation brain blood circulation and reduce oxidative stress because it has antioxidant uh, antioxidative action and uh, we have several meta-analyses according to them it can have neuroprotective action in people who already have alzheimer's disease but in healthy people it has no effect it has no improvement of cognition so if we say ginkgo biloba as a uh, neurotropic agent it's very weak for example uh, from my view omega-3 is almost 9 out of 10 so it's one of the best supplement you can intake for your brain vitamin b12 and b6 is also important but it's more like threshold like uh, threshold like action it means that if you have deficiency of them yes they are effective but if you intake excessive them benefits are not very high so they are good they are maybe 7 out of 10 and ginkgo biloba is very low it's 5 out of 10 um, because yes it has some protective action yes it has some antioxidant effect and it protects our body for from oxidative stress but it does not improve cognition it's very important and curcumin is another supplement it's very popular also it has anti-inflammatory action antioxidant action and also it in, uh, it it acts on neurotransmitters it increases level of dopamine and serotonin it's very important and we have studies and meta-analysis according to them curcumin improves memory and cognitive function in healthy individuals so we can say that it has some important effectiveness but this effectiveness is not high it's important but not very high also it slows down alzheimer's related cognitive impairment and also it has antidepressant effect and high doses of curcumin also in, uh, enhance production of dopamine and dopamine increase focus and motivation also and increased serotonin means improved mood especially in people who has depression that's all i wanted to say uh, to summarize curcumin is 8 out of 10 for me um, omega-3 is best uh, vitamin b uh, group is also good but it's it's more beneficial when you have deficiency of this vitamin and intake these vitamins and curcumin also shows important effectiveness that's all i wanted to say thank you for your interest thank you for your watching if you like my videos please thumbs up if you like my channel please subscribe thank you very much bye for now